Welcome back, guys. I am excited for this video. This is something I've been meaning to do for quite a little while now, ever since Reckless Customs actually released these. If you guys don't know by the video title, we will be doing the LED rings for your side panels. These come from Reckless Customs. I actually couldn't fit everything back in the original box because I don't know how they packaged it coming from the factory, but we got them. Look at these babies. So these, along with these RGB control LEDs, are going to sit just like that. So for reference point, that's your pet cock. You follow that down. These sit right here in your plastics. What makes me a little nervous about these is I have no reference other than their photos on their website as to how exactly you mount these. Um, I've seen no other videos on YouTube of anybody doing this. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the first on YouTube for a little while until someone else discovers them or orders them or bothers to do a review on them. So I will cover as much as I can to help anybody else who is going to put these on their bike. Other people have definitely done it before me, but I have seen no videos on YouTube. So I'm kind of going into this blind. Um, they give you the box. So there's actually three options, I'm pretty sure. So you can just order these discs, these aluminum discs. Then you can order uh, LED halos that sit behind them that are just a white. So you just essentially, you just hook them up to a rocker switch and when you want them on, you just press them on. Um, and then they give you an RGB controller and they send you different rings, obviously, that can handle the different RGB colors. They send you two of them. I think the second one is in there. So they send you two of them, one for each side. These sit over these. They give you the controller, so each of these plugs into that. And then this plugs into your thing. And then you have your positive and negative, which go back to your battery. Give you a manual. They do not give you a manual on how to install these. They just tell you to download their app and how to use essentially the lights and the, the functionality of it. They do not tell you how to install these. When I put these on, I'm probably going to have to take this off which isn't gonna be a huge deal. I am probably gonna to have to, so you're obviously gonna to have to take this whole side fender off, which isn't a huge deal because I've done that a few hundred thousand times. The one thing that's gonna bug me though, and this might bug you guys, is looking at this head on, it looks fine. And looking at it from the side, see if I can get a good, look how flush and nice that looks. The issue comes when you go to light this up because this has no adhesive on the back of it. It's just a base piece of metal. And you go into this light and this has adhesive, so this will clip and stick onto the plastic, but there's no way to put this metal on the light. So I don't know how exactly we're gonna do that. I'm gonna try to find the best method possible to install this so it just stays permanently on there. Like usual with every single other mod pretty much that we've done to this bike, you're gonna wanna take all three of these top panels off. So that includes both side panels and your gas tank one. So you don't actually have to take the side panels off like this attached to the middle section. It is just a pain in the butt having to get these four screws off when you have a steering column right here and your gas tank right here. It's kind of difficult to get a screwdriver in there. So I just take it off, or at least recently I've started whenever I take these two panels off, I just pop the sides because it has the, the rubber crush rivets and I just lift the whole thing up. And then you can further disassemble it, which is what we're about to do right now. Again, it is just those four Phillips screwdriver heads and those will come right off. All right, and now the temperature is moving into like the 30s. I'm gonna to try to move this project inside where it's gonna be a little bit warmer. Um, I have a nice pool table that we can go ahead and, and put these panels on and try to figure out how exactly we're gonna mount these. So yeah, I will be in the basement in one second. So after sitting here for over a half an hour, there is no feasible way to mount this ring onto here. I don't know. I sent Reckless Customs a message 
I'm hoping to hear back. Dang, look at that gloss. Um, I'm hoping to hear back from them, but there is just, it fits in there, on, but that's on the inside though. And these aren't too bright. They're, they're all right. I mean, they work off of a remote like that, except on your phone. They're not too bright, so they're not really gonna shine through the plastics if I were to mount them right here and throw the metal decals on the outside here. So I'm gonna have to get creative. I'm gonna have to get crafty. I think I'm gonna have to cut up these plastics. I really don't want to. I have an extra set on standby. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to figure out a way on how to do this. All right, now that those are off, this reveals that there is a space right here. You can see it before, obviously. I don't know why I said it reveals. It doesn't really reveal much. But it shows you that there's actually a pretty decent sized cavity right here on the outside. So if we go ahead and take the ring and put that there, what I'm getting at is all we have to do is cut little slots around this for the light to poke through if we go to mount this on the inside underneath of the plastic. We are back and this is how I'm gonna do the other panel. So, see some of my Sharpie marks? The holes aren't even, unfortunately, but you're not gonna notice because the cover is gonna be covering it and there's gonna be a lot of light coming out of it. So I think we'll be good. What I did was I took that drill, started out with a pilot bit, went around and marked all the holes as evenly as I could. And then I went a little bit bigger and then I went to an even bigger drill bit. So the bit that I used for the pilot bit, and I'm actually gonna show you exactly how I did this, but I just want everybody to get a frame of reference. I used a 7 64ths pilot bit, went up to a 13 64ths, and then I finished with an 11 30 seconds. So that's how big these holes are, 11 30 seconds. It casts pretty decent light. Um, you can see a little bit of light through the plastic. You can definitely see it bouncing off coming out here. I will show you guys once I get the other trim panel done, um, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and guide you guys on how I did the next panel. I scratched the plastics just a little bit with the drill. This is spinning. So when you're trying to drill and get that hole right, you might touch the plastics. Apply it anywhere that people are gonna be able to see on the outside of the bike. Just gentle amount of painter's tape. And now when this is spinning, it's gonna hit that. You hear it? It's not damaging anything underneath. It's just hitting the painter's tape. Find the middle. One right there, two, three. There's three holes right there. And go ahead and do 12 on this side. And you're just gonna go around and mark them as evenly as possible. I'm gonna start on this side just so you can see me drilling it. All you're gonna do is carefully Put the drill bit right where you have your mark and just go as slow as you can. Just making sure you are drilling properly. You're gonna swap over to a little bit bigger of a drill bit and you're gonna go ahead and widen these a little bit for the even bigger drill bit that you're gonna be sending through here. I'll show you over here, ready? See, it's pulling it itself in, and if we back it out, the back setting just cleared the hole out. So you're gonna go ahead and do that carefully through all of these. Trim up these holes, because they have flaps now sticking out. It's gonna look kind of ugly if you look down into it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna flatten these out and just trim them down and make them look a little bit better. To some people, that might have been the harder part. I, I mean, you don't have to fix it up, but people are gonna go ahead and look into it, and they're gonna see little things sticking up, kind of like how you do now. 
Um, it won't be really noticeable when the gray is on there, but when you have bigger stuff flaring up, they're definitely going to notice it. Um, but yeah, if you don't have as steady of a hand as some other people, that might be a little bit scarier to do to your plastics. But um, it is all in good fun. And now we're going to go ahead and see if we can't mount those lights. All right, this is about a week into the future. I had to wait a week because the RGBs that came with the kit are terrible. So you have your RGBs right here. I'm going to call them RGBs. I'm not going to call them hails. I'm just going to call them RGBs. Connects to this little pod. Ignore all of this. I will get to that in just one second. Um, I'm going to try to explain this as fast as I can because I am pretty much 180-ing on this entire project. Everything that you just watched me drilling these holes out and everything is how I'm going to mount it. That worked great. But as far as ordering those rings and ordering the halo kit with it as well, um, I'm going to go ahead and advise against it. And I'm going to show you guys just why. So this is what the RGB halos actually look like. They're actually surprisingly bright. I actually have no issues with how they physically look and how the color really comes across. I'm gonna show you the issue that I have, and it's not with this, it's actually with the controller box itself. So it's a little bit difficult to tell, but one thing that I can't stand about these lights, and I didn't really know this when I ordered them, is they run off of your phone. So I can't exactly show you guys because I would have to go into my phone. There's this app called RGB LED strip or whatever, and you control them through your phone. There is no remote. They don't have RGB remotes. I'm such a diehard for these remotes because they never fail and they're really nice to have. Some people would prefer it on their phones, but I just don't, unfortunately. That's just how I am. Number two, I am on the yellow setting. I don't know if you guys can really see for some reason, it can't hold a constant color. It almost has like a burned out look. I don't know if I just got a bad unit or something like that. Coming from Reckless Customs, they're not exactly friendly when it comes to returning electrical items. That's actually their policy. They don't cover electrical items. So I just paid almost $60 for two Navi templates, which are extremely cool actually, in an RGB kit that serves me no real good because it doesn't hold a constant color. This Navi that I have happens to be that yellowish green and that's what I love. That's my color scheme. It's just how it is. I can't make these hold a constant color. If I go to pink, it automatically goes to like an orangish red. That's them trying to hold yellow. Green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. That's on the solid color wheel too. Like that's not... That's terrible. <laughs> this is a fully charged battery, lithium too. The battery's not the issue, I think it's just the controller. So I'm having a lot of technical issues with that, so I don't recommend them. So now that we have that arguable garbage out of the way, I present to you the sun. <laughs> to say that these are bright is an understatement. These are bright. I don't quite need them to be this bright i can actually just dim it you know obviously you can go ahead and make them darker um that's probably how bright the other ones were maybe right there these just skyrocket like this is bright that is extremely bright it just lights up the whole ceiling it comes with the controller i actually get a controller it's not run off my phone extremely high quality LEDs, wiring harness that is extremely long. You can cut it if you want, I probably won't. Waterproof bud connectors, I'm pretty sure. Um, and they have a rectifier capacitor. So that is what I'm going to be using instead of those ones. So we will get right back into completing this project. So all I'm doing here is I'm mixing JB Weld into a 50-50 ratio, you put one strip of white right there and one strip of black. Mix it up with a toothpick. Um, I'll show you how I did the first plastic. So I have this glass jar actually applying pressure down onto it. I don't know if those are gonna be good enough, but once this sticks and I don't have to have a glass jar on it, 
Um, I can go around and add even more if I have to, but this is just a start out point. So get something that's pretty similar to the diameter of that. Make sure it's not touching the weld either. You know, you don't wanna go to take the glass jar off and it's sticking to the, the JB weld. And this one seems to be holding pretty decent actually. That one was popping off, like whenever I press the ring down, it would pop up. So this one seems to stay exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some more onto that. So without having the glass on, this is what we look like. It does get a little bit on the side of it, but it's mainly just up here. And again, it doesn't have to look beautiful because no one's gonna notice. It's, this is These rings at least, compared to those ones, are way too bright, so you're not gonna notice anything. If you had bothered to put some on the outside, they might have seen it. But again, I'm just trying to go for the inside. And if I feel like this isn't enough, I can go back tomorrow when this is fully hardened and add even more. All right, so my biggest worry right now is figuring out where I can fit this electronic junk into the Navi. As you can see, I've used a lot of my room in the Navi. The other side's all used up worth of stuff. Denali sound bomb, uh, air compressor right there. I have my battery relocation essentially going there. That comes from the battery. So I don't really have any place to put this actually. I could delete the EGR box. I'd have to cut it from this tray. That's a lot of work. And that's technically holding that up. So I can't exactly delete that. Can't put anything on my forks. Passenger foot peg right there. It's pretty big so you do need this though this turns this into like five amps i think it's a 12 12 volt to five volt converter um so i'm gonna have to figure out where exactly i can put this and i've realized that there's room underneath your tail light and your backing piece for your rear wheel area if you look underneath here yes sir yes sir look at that so i drilled through the plastic mounted a nut with a washer so it wouldn't pull through anti-fade nut too because these things like to rattle um measured it we have enough room where that that panel piece that comes through will not contact this it's going to be perfectly dry and then above that we have zip ties pulling through the underside and to prevent it from shifting back and forth, I did double-sided stickies on the zip ties. And that is, I mean, it doesn't look clean. The only thing clean about this is the rectifier thing or the voltage meter. That looks kind of jank, but you'll never see this ever with that panel over it. So they give you four of these for other accessories, but for right now, or maybe forever two of these are going to be sealed off just to prevent moisture and stuff from getting in there and they will be tucked up with that and then the other two are going to be used for each side panel if you look in there wow <laughs> talk about a tight fit you can't even tell other than looking in there and seeing but you can't you'd, you'd never know Make sure this surface is 110% clean. I'm gonna be using the M3035 rubber adhesive. I've had great luck with this actually. We're gonna do just the slightest. That is what we look like. All right, it's a day later now. These seem to have glued perfectly. The only thing we have left to do is to actually mount these for real this time and wait until dusk. So 
that's what they look like. That's it. And it has, I think, 120 modes, I believe. Again, the controller is actually underneath here, so... But it, it feeds IRF signal pretty dang good. And you can see it poking right through the holes. I don't know if I need to do the holes, but you can actually see it looks kind of cool with the holes, so I like it. Got the speaker right there on. You know, it is pretty cool. The modes on this are absolutely endless. You know, I'm extremely happy with this over the one that came with the kit. You can see this from pretty far away too. You can control it pretty far away too. Looks really, really good. I have been wanting to do this mod for so long and it is finally done. But it is absolutely frigid out right now, so I'm gonna turn everything back off and I will see you guys inside. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Unfortunately, these ain't it. I feel bad. They're just not good. Unfortunately, I had a lot higher hopes with the kit. Um, but at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. And I pay for these and I got them. So they do exactly what I want and they look cool. I really wanted this to sit as flush as possible. And I think I could not have done a better job myself. So in my mind, that is exactly how these are supposed to be mounted. Thank you guys for bearing with me on this one. This was a lot of work, but yeah, not half bad. So uh, I will see you guys in the next video. I do have more stuff planned. I didn't even, didn't even put any of the bolts back into the plastics themselves. Um, nothing is actually bolted down. It's just kind of free floating right there. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and think of something else to do. While winter is here, it's chilly outside. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Um, yeah, peace.